one thing I want to talk about in this broadcast that the Lord placed so strongly in my heart. I had to pray this for my own self even before bringing this. Is the purity of heart. Write it down please. The purity of heart. These are not the kinds of messages that you easily hear in the body of Christ again sadly. The purity of heart. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. There is a powerful blessing that is connected according to scripture to purity of heart. Matthew 5 and verse 8. Let me turn it here. Matthew 5 and verse 8. It says, blessed are the pure in heart. You know the blessing? It says, for they shall see God. Very powerful scripture. Not blessed are the believers. Not blessed are those who fast. Not blessed are those who pray. Not blessed are those who go to church. Not blessed are those who preach. This very blessing is connected to those who are pure in heart. What does it mean to be pure in heart? Jesus looked at a man called Nathaniel and he said nathaniel when they called on nathaniel this was a man who was even doubting the ministry of jesus and yet jesus said an israelite indeed in whom there is no guile that is the definition of being pure in heart to be pure in heart is not about perfection and blamelessness to be pure in heart is that intrinsically you are void and free of guile falsehood deception and wickedness that's what it means to be pure in heart and the bible says the blessing is they shall see god you know what that means it doesn't just mean they shall have visionary encounters of god they will always see god manifest in their situation why because whether they are right or wrong the purity of their heart sustains an attracting power so you can find people who doctrinally are wrong as far as the pursuit of purpose are wrong and yet God seems to show up in their lives because the, there is a blessing that those who are pure in heart will see God. They will see God show up. They will see God step in. They will see God arise for them. That means they will never be left in shame because of the purity of heart. Is someone learning? Proverbs chapter 16. Let's read from verse 16 to 19. Proverbs 16, 16 to 19. But the verse of emphasis is verse 18. Proverbs chapter 16 from verse 16 to 19. Proverbs 6, I meant to say. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. 6, 16 to 19. Watch this. It says, a proud look. These six things that the Lord hate and seven are an abomination to him. So the Lord hates this. Number one, a proud look. Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devised wicked imagination. That's it right there. Feet that be swift to running to mischief 19 a false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among brethren that these six things and seven the lord is saying i personally hate it back to verse 18 it says a heart that devised wicked imagination this is a heart that is not pure and let me tell you you can be a believer and still have this kind of heart you can be a preacher and still have this kind of heart a heart that intrinsically devised wicked imagination one of the reasons why god judged the earth in the days of noah it was more than just that they were sinners it was that the heart of man was perpetually devising wickedness and imagination purity of heart we can have i wrote here we can have good 
and even godly activities but are inspired by wrong or corrupt motives you can have a very godly activity as a man of god as a businessman and yet because your heart is not pure it will not bring the blessing that should come with it i'm reminded of john chapter 12 the first six verses very classic scripture that reveals to us the corruption that is intrinsic within the heart of man the bible says then six days before the passover came six then jesus six days before the passover he came to bethany where lazarus was which had been dead whom he raised from the dead we're reading to six verse two it says and they made him a supper and martha served but lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him verse three the bible says then took mary a pound of ointment of spikenard very costly and anointed the feet of jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment now watch the reaction the bible says then saith one of his disciples judas iscariot simon's son which should betray him why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor very good activity if you were to judge him by that statement you would say what a lovely man who loved the poor but the bible is quick to tell us verse 6 that this he said not that he cared for the poor but because he was a thief this he said not that he cared for the poor but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put that means he was using a very good statement but it was to achieve a selfish reason unfortunately there are so many in the body of christ today if you judge by what they are saying if you judge by what they are doing you will say it is true but behind the scenes is a corrupt and a wicked heart that is not pure at all are we together purity of heart this he said not that he cared for the poor this he said not that he cared for the lost this he said not that he cared for the ignorant this he said not that he cared for the confused this he said not that he cared for the body of Christ but because he was a thief purity of heart I have met some of the worst of the worst people you can think and I've had the honor of sitting down with some of them smokers liars all kinds of terrible people and I am amazed sometimes at the depth and the extent of purity that is in their heart in the height of the supposed decadence around their lives once you shift beyond that veil you will find out that this is a sincere person i have met idol worshipers i have met supposedly wicked people and then when you sit with them and vet them you even use their own life to repent but i have met people who are masters of communication as ministers as business people i have met powerful people i have met great people i've met all kinds of great people honorable people and yet in the midst of it you find out that there is corruption within their heart it is my prayer first for myself for you for our global family please let's honor reverend sam oye thank you thank you thank you god bless you for your presence sir hallelujah are we together blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god blessed are the pure in heart there were a group of people in the bible that every time jesus met he always reached out to them because although they were sinners they were pure in heart he met the woman at the well he saw a woman with a terrible life but beyond that layer she was pure in heart he met Nicodemus and he saw that he was pure in heart. But there were a few people who were always at his crusades, always at his programs. 
and yet because they were not pure in heart they never received anything my second message to the body of christ is that we must return to the purity of heart genuinely desire the good of all and the good of the body write this down genuinely desire the good of all and the good of the body genuinely desire the good of all and the good of the body i wrote here do not wish for anticipate and even support the downfall or the destruction of anyone in the body of christ do not wish for do not anticipate and do not even support the downfall or the destruction of anyone in the body luke chapter 2 and verse 14 see what happened to the earth as jesus was born luke chapter 2 not leviticus luke 2 14 it says glory to god in the highest and on earth peace and good will towards men because jesus was born he said this is the consequence glory to god in the highest and on earth there should be peace and goodwill towards men galatians chapter 6 and verse 10 galatians 6 and verse 10 galatians chapter 6 and verse 10 it says as we have as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith don't sit down and wish for any church any man of god any ministry any assembly and you anticipate evil and rejoice when it happens that is that is lack of purity of heart it says the pure in heart will see god hallelujah once upon a time jesus sent the disciples towards jerusalem the bible says and then when they went there they were not received and jesus was surprised and the disciples came and said listen should we call down fire on them as elijah did remember elijah was a no-nonsense man and jesus turned to them and rebuked them and said do you not know what spirit you are of that means what is the meaning of that purity of heart every time i pray i ask the lord i say beyond being a preacher may my heart be sincere towards you and towards men is someone learning because there is a growing absence of the purity of heart sadly even within the body of christ the degree to which we enjoy we celebrate and even promote the pain of others is becoming alarming and there has to be a system of managing and curbing this it's an attack on the de on, on the body of christ by the devil purity of heart wish for the good of all wish for the good of everyone in the body do not wish for anticipate or even support the downfall or the destruction of anyone in the body